American flat bow, old school archery. Here is a hickory bow stave. It's been drying for over two years and it was straight at the onset of the drying but you can see how it had changed but in the, the bow making process this will uh, straighten out it'll take the proper shape but what I'm looking at here is there are some flaws and I'm going to try to see if I can work around them or in between these these here are where the handle is the handle does not bend so that's of little concern but here's a larger flaw and one more so I might be able to uh, miss these uh, if not you have to make the area thicker to make it stronger so this is hickory and it's supposed to be an easier or is an easier wood uh, to make bows out of. After a close inspection and some measurements I cannot avoid these flaws. So what I'm going to do is remove the bark off another stave. Here's the stave with the bark off. <clears throat> the next step would be cut this to length which is 5 foot 8 inches long. Here is the stave cut to length. This will be the length of the bow. And one thing I want to mention is the edge of any board um, usually they have checks in them when they're drying and you really couldn't see it but I cut off the end first um, in half inch increments and I got to an inch and a half before there was no checking so this end is solid if you did that that's where the knock would be and you would have a weak area there uh, it could break at the knock and then once that end was cut and I was sure that it was solid, no checking, then I marked the length to 5 foot 8 inches and chopped it off there. And as you're sighting down, it looks like a pretty good stave. It should make a good bow. Again, this is a shave horse and this makes it really nice to work cutting your bow stave. Um, if you don't have one of these, you should make one. They're pretty easy, and I do have a video showing how to make a pretty simple folding one out of 2x4s. So you should check that out. First thing you want to do is find your center line. Now this is 5 foot 8, which is 68 inches, so center line would be 34. Okay, now we're going to lay out the handle. The handle is an area that will not bend, so it's about a four inch, four to six inch area. The uh, handle is going to be offset. So the lower limb is going to end up being a little bit thicker. Okay, now we need to run a center line down this stave. Now the width of the bow of this limb um, maintains a width of an inch and a half. And that will extend from the beginning of the limb right here it will extend up 13 inches. So we're going to lay out 13 inch line here. Okay, I have the reference line for the one side here. And I'm going to take the draw knife and cut it down to that line. What I wanted to show here, this area here is a bruise. This was from one of the hooks when they were logging. And you can see it punctured the outer part. And uh, this area here is beginning to rot. So that makes this stave worthless. Here I'm removing the bark. Got to get the bark off so you can see if there's any flaws on the wood. Come off nice and clean. No flaws on this piece. Before I cut the bow stave, I'm going to show you the dimensions and the layout lines. Right here you can see the center line 
of the bow. And if you look closely, this area here is the handle. Notice that the handle is offset. So from the center line, we have the grip, which is a, a four inch grip. So we have one inch up from the center line, three inches down from the center line. Then the taper to the limbs, this is inch and a half and inch and a half. Those are symmetrical. Now, the top section of the bow, first of all, the width of the bow of the limb at this point is an inch and a half. And from this uh, starting point to this point, that measures 13 inches. And that maintains the inch and a half width. From here, we go 10 inches down to this point. Okay, this is where the limb starts to narrow. So we're going from a inch and a half width down to a three quarter inch width. Now the remaining part, we come up here. This is seven and a half inches and one inch to the tip. So we go from three quarter inch down seven and a half inches to one half inch wide. Okay, now the bottom half of the bow is similar. However, let me show you the difference. From here is the inch and a half. We come down from the center line. We're measuring from center line. We come down 14 and a half inches. And this is your one and a half mark. And then from center line again, we come down to this point. That's 24 and 3 quarter inches. And at this point, it's 3 quarter inch wide. And then the remaining, we come down to 9 sixteenths of an inch in width. So this is uh, 9 sixteenths instead of 3 eighths. So that's a big difference right there. The thickness of the limbs. Okay, starting from the center. The beginning of the limb. Here's your handle. Beginning of the limb. 11 sixteenths. And coming down at the 13 inch mark, it tapers down to 7 sixteenth inch thick. And then to the 10 inch mark, it goes to 3 8 inch and to maintains 3 eighths to the end of the limb. The lower limb starting at 11 sixteenths, 7 sixteenths, 3 eighths, and to the end 3 eighths. So these measurements on the width are consistent top and bottom. It's the length and the width of the bottom limb that changes it needs to be changed to make it stronger because it's a shorter limb. And it's shorter because the handle is offset. Okay, now, this can be rough cut with uh, the bandsaw or taking it down with the shave horse and the draw knife. When I'm cutting on this, I'm cutting the side edges down to my guidelines and then I work the center area. I'm working the width of it before I taper it down and the reason for doing that is it will give me a more parallel uh, surface, more rectangular. Okay, we're real close now I'm going to taper the, taper the limbs and right here you see there's a, an abrupt change. You want that to go in gra a gradual change. An abrupt change will make a weak spot. So if you make it real gradual it'll make it stronger. The ends should be slightly tapered like this. 
and it'll come down almost an inch and this is where the grooves will be set and we're going to put the grooves in with a Ron file and when they go in they will be at a slight angle and it opens up on the belly side it does not get any cutting on the on the back just like that and then I'll clean it up with a round file I cut the grooves for the string with my pen knife and now I'm going to make these uniform and I'm using a file for a chainsaw. Perfect dimension, perfect size. If you look closely at the way this is shaped, you see it gets wider on the belly side and that's because it, when you pull on the bow, when you draw it back, the angle that the string is in changes. So you have to open it up wider on the belly side. When you put the bow on the tillering stick, you can see the curve. You want it symmetrical. This side is the upper side. It's a little bit longer or weaker, thinner. The lower side is shorter. It's a little bit thicker. And the upper part, this side on the left, is bending more. So I'm going to shave down the right side just a tad and I'm scraping now because it's so close. You can see I used a pencil to mark areas that are thicker, that are that is not bending as easily. So it's very little that has to come off. So you can either use like a pen knife or a sharp knife or I'm using my draw knife and just using this as a scraper. And you remove very little at a time. You put this back on the tiller. You can see it's starting to take a, uh, a bow, a bend. <coughs> the corners, you want to break the edges. You want to take some sandpaper and soften those so you don't have a sharp edge on them. And I'm using a coarse grit right now because I want it, want it to be fairly aggressive on those edges. Then you want to feel for any of the chatter marks from the scraping and smooth those down. And then these ends, we want to round this off slightly this way. When you file this groove for the string, you do not want to file on the back. That would weaken it and it could break the tip right off. So leave that intact. You can file onto the belly. On the uh, outer surface, the back of the bow, uh, this darker color is the uh, cambium layer. And I'm sanding, but I'm not going to sand all of this off. I want to leave that on there as a decoration for the wood. You can see the bow on the tiller stick and the curve of the limbs are pretty uniform. Here I have the bow strung. Here you can see my tillering stick and it's nothing fancy. It was a piece of 2 by 4 I cut a notch here for the handle of the bow. You can be a lot fancier. You can line that with leather. And then starting at 6 inches from this point, I have it a slot cut and the slot is at a slight uh, angle towards the handle. 
So I'm going every two inches and I went up to 30 inches. So uh, this is used when you're tillering. And you can also use this as the gauge for your draw when you're measuring how many pounds your bow will draw at usually 28 inches. Here I have the bow um, ready to take a finish. I've already sanded it, I've shot the bow, and it's functioning very nice. Now what I'm going to use for a finish is orange sh shellac. This will highlight the color. It's a natural finish. It will penetrate into the wood. And what I'm going to do is after this dries, I will sand it again and uh, build the coats up. Shellac uh, comes from a female uh, bug called a, the lac bug. And it is produced in India and Thailand. The process, the female bug produces an excretion as it's uh, part of its reproductive cycle. The female's been fertilized. It starts producing a secretion that uh, covers the, the bug and the eggs. And it's as a protection for the eggs. Secretion is then chipped off of the branches and then processed with uh, alcohol and that dissolves the shellac and creates this natural finish. Now you can buy the shellac in little chips and then mix it with denatured alcohol and then used as a finish. It's also a, a natural substance that can be used for uh, food processing, food preservation, uh, coloring agent, or a, as a wood finish like we are using. After the first coat of shellac dries, you want to sand it. And I'm using 220 paper, 220 grit. And the finish is like glass. So it doesn't matter if you sand it all off, that first coat, what it's doing is it's sealing the wood and filling pores. So we'll put a couple more coats, sand in between, and get a real nice smooth finish. Here the bow is finished, and it is 45 pounds at 28 inch draw. And here's the handle. And I put a arrow rest, and the finish is shellac. Bow string, I've set a knock underneath the arrow. This is a shot of my shop drawings, and I'll zoom in here. And I'm showing only the upper portion of the bow. The lower portion is slightly shorter, but very similar. And here, if you check the dimensions out. You can always pause your computer so that you could write these down. And a couple notes. This is the overall length. 5 foot 8 inches long. Finished draw weight 45 to 50 pounds at 27 to 28 inches. And a note that a newly made bow might be weighing five pounds higher before you break it in. And here's a note on the lower limbs. And these are the dimensions that would correspond to the distance measured below the center line. Follow these dimensions and it should be easy to construct this bow.